Hello and welcome to Solar Quotes Vodcast, episode 16. Uh, today we will be talking about fuel efficiency standards, well Ronald will be, mm -hmm. the rise and fall of SMA, the inverter manufacturer, big renewables in Australia, yes. and uh, our new reviews features, which I think are really, really useful and interesting. Mm -hmm. You may not. I hope you do. Mm -hmm and nukes in Finland. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. All right. So, Ronald, you wrote a post about how vehicle fuel efficiency standards work. They save lives and money, and you can still buy a ute. Phew. Tell us more. Well, oh, sorry. Well, uh, vehicle fuel efficiency standards are something almost every developed country has, and Despite what you may have heard, it's not a tax. You won't have to buy an electric car. You can still buy petrol-powered cars, you won't, and you can still buy a ute. It's not a disaster. It will save Australia money, cut pollution, and by cutting pollution, it will save lives. And of course, greenhouse gas emissions will be cut. Win-win. Win, 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 win. So it might save lives and save money, but is the cost of my gas guzzling ute going to increase? No. Why not? Well, so you have a gas guzzling ute now. The cost of running that may decrease because Australia will be using less petrol as a whole. So the price of petrol or diesel sh will decrease. I don't have a gas guzzling ute. But right. say I have got a gas guzzling ute and I want to buy a new gas guzzling ute in three mm. years' time. Will okay. it be more expensive? In three, in let's say 2025, which is when this scheme will be phased in, uh, the average emissions for cars will be 105 grams of carbon dioxide per kilometre driven. So if you have a gas guzzling ute, you may have to pay a little more. Or you could buy a fuel efficient ute instead. Shock horror. Yeah, shock horror. Huh? thought. And so it could be uh, just a fuel efficient one, maybe smaller than you would have bought before. Oh, it hang, could on, be... hang on, hang on, oh, hang on. Hang on, hang on. I'm finished. Can't buy a small ute. Can't... That's They come in various sizes, you know. It is possible to buy one that's smaller than average. All right, I want a freaking massive, big... okay. a freaking massive ute. Is it going to be more expensive? Do you want, yeah. Do you... No. Yes. <laughs> Depending Make your mind how up. you look at it. Do you want an electric ute or a petrol one or a hybrid one? Fast one. Then you want an electric fast and one. Big. Well, if you want a fast ute in town, you want an electric ute because they will go like the, what's a good word which isn't rude? Clappers. Clappers, yes. They'll go like the privy door when the plague is in town. That's, um, they'll move very slickly because they have great acceleration and when they're not loaded up with anything, they'll go whoosh from the lights that accelerate like a Tesla sports car. So, yeah, the, all the rev heads, they might be resistant to electric cars at first, but once they get start being left for dead by the electric vehicles, they'll quickly change their minds. So if you insist in 2025 mm. on buying a massive ute and you refuse to have any electric motor in there, whether it's a plug-in hybrid, a hybrid, or all electric, mm. it may cost you a little bit more. Yeah. And what's wrong with, I want a massive ute that's going to pollute loads and I don't want to pay any more for it piss off you're just being unreasonable <laughs> yeah um, it's not like you're not going to have other options did you see the comment on this where someone posted a link to the, uh, a video of the tesla um someone had put together what they thought a tesla ute might look like yes they yes, look freaking that. awesome but that shows us how cool these things could look <laughs> trying times continue for sma sma aren't doing as well as they used to mm -hmm. um yep. if we go back to i don't know 2010 ish SMA were the clear leaders in the oh, quality yeah. inverter market. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. of, you wanted a good inverter, you got an SMA. Yeah. Um, and I, they sold like hotcakes. Mm -hmm. um, then the uh, executive leadership of SMA mm -hmm. in Germany decided that they would start making many of their inverters in China. Mm -hmm. And they bought a Chinese company called Zephyr Solar. Yep. So basically, they grasped defeat from the jaws of victory. Since yes. then, in Australia, I don't know about the rest of the world, it's their image and their sales have gone bleh. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and now they are reversing that decision. They're selling the Chinese 
uh, company they bought and they're yeah. moving all their production back to Germany yes. after God knows how many tens or hundred millions of dollars down the mm. Swanee. Yeah, yeah, I think they're just mining their good image, mining their brand. Had an amazing brand based on mm. being 100% manufactured in Germany yeah. and they absolutely trashed it. I mean, how That's, stupid can you get? Yeah, maybe they're just overconfident about what they could achieve. But uh, we saw the insides of the inverters and they weren't copying what they were doing in Germany. Yeah. There was a Zeva Sol, it was like it was Zeva Solar inside. Yeah. Mm. Um, at the time, I remember, I mean, you can see it on the blog, you can look in the comments and on social media. We suggested, well, we did a bit more than suggested, it was a stupid move. And some of the people employed by SMA in Australia absolutely laid into me and Solar Quotes um, <laughs> for suggesting that yes. it was a stupid move. So I feel a little bit vindicated there. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing I'd say about SMA is, in my experience over the last 10 years, pretty much every time I've dealt with them, they've come across as incredibly arrogant in Australia. I don't know why, mm -hmm. but there seems to be a it's culture so problem It's so unusual there. for Germans to be, can <laughs> be uh, viewed as arrogant. You can't say that. <laughs> anyway, um, no SMA, respect. you make awesome inverters in yes. Germany. Um, you yes. made a brilliant, I think, a brilliant acquisition with Tygo. Mm -hmm. I think integrating Tygo into your inverters so the SMA string inverters can talk to Tygos without an extra box is brilliant. Mm. Um, so, you know, yeah. I wish you all the best. Just try not to be so arrogant when mm -hmm. we talk to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, one th good thing on the subject of Germany. The Merkel has said they're going to what? Look into how to get Germany to zero net emissions by 2050. That's great because they were sort of Looked like they were dragging their feet on this. Are they going to restart the nukes? I, she said she's going to look into how to do it. I don't know how at this point in time, but oh, good when, when Merkel says something like that, you can be, it's a lot better than a, a promise from a lot of other politicians. So it's a great thing. Well, like Angus Taylor. No comment. Big renewables. Oh, yeah. I don't mean big. Renewables. I mean, yeah, awesome. Ready? Yes. Uh, 11 gigawatts of renewables i think mm -hmm. seven and a half gig of wind three and a half yeah that makes 11 gig of solar mm -hmm. in palabra region yep out in west can you give us some context 11 gigawatts uh australia has about 45 gigawatts of generating capacity in total that's everything <laughs> they're gonna add 11 wind solar coal blah 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 they're gonna put a massive extension lead up to indonesia yep. increase australia's generating capacity by a quarter this is exciting stuff it's exciting, it's interesting, it can be done, it's not pie in the sky. It's not going to be cheap, so, you know, it's, they're saying it'll be viable in the near future, so fingers crossed it all works out. We'll have to see. It's still in the planning stages, but yes, it is very exciting. I think it'll be the longest high voltage yeah, DC yeah, line it's, ever it'll built. it'll be the biggest thing ever built. So that's that's that really cool thing. that yeah. they're trying that. And it's mm -hmm. not without risk, but yep. we should get absolutely behind it. Yes. Um, Brilliant, and they're going to um, talking about generating green hydrogen. Yes, and that works. People are going to say, "Oh, Ronald, you're inconsistent. You said hydrogen doesn't work in another time and place." Yeah, I said Japan's not going to have hydrogen-powered vehicles all over the roads. That's not going to happen. But when you got a line and there's nowhere else in this area for electricity to go and your wind and solar is producing more power than the line can transmit, you can produce hydrogen for next to nothing. So, yeah. There's a lot of really exciting things about mm -hmm. this project that the world needs, so good on you. Get cracking. Yep, that's right. Brilliant, brilliant. It's good news. Mm -hmm. uh, something else I think is really cool that Michael wrote about, Port Augusta yep. here in South Australia, vanadium redox flow battery project progressing. I think... I really like these batteries for um, utility scale projects because yep. they don't degrade. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, you know, you can do mechanical repairs and refresh the uh, the vanadium. Is it vanadium? Yeah, it's a v vanadium. You kind of, I think, flow battery. You kind of take this liquid out and clean it and refresh it, and mm. the battery can, in theory, go forever. I yep. mean, um, yep. compared to a lithium ion that you know, mm -hmm. might have 10, 15 years life before yeah. it needs replacing. Um, now, capital costs are very important when deciding between the two types of batteries. If your capital costs are low, you're a huge industry which can borrow money cheaply. Vanadium battery, because it's long life time, can be a best buy. If you're a smaller company, higher capital costs, maybe you're borrowing from the mafia. 
uh, maybe lithium-ion is better. It doesn't last as long, but you know, okay. it all depends. So it all depends situation. It's great that there's competition with lithium-ion in this space. This is a big battery. This is twice the storage capacity of the Tesla big battery. This yeah. is 200 megawatt hours, mm -hmm. but it's lower power, isn't it? I think it's 50 megawatts, if I remember correctly. 50 megawatts of power. Yeah, so right. if you're doing, um, if it's for frequency stabilization, grid stabilization. They, they are going to use it for that. Oh, okay. I was going to say, maybe you want lithium for that fast reaction. I don't know. Maybe it's fine. I'm sure they've thought it through. I, I think so. Sometimes, <laughs> well, I've heard of them whacking the two together. You put the uh, vanadium there for your energy storage and you have the lithium as well for the quick response. Yeah. But we'll see. What Again, it's newish technology. Hmm? The world needs lots of different ways to store electricity. So do you want me to have one thing to bitch about? Go for it. They're saying that, oh, it doesn't use, it's better for the environment because it doesn't use uh, cobalt and the certain rare earth lithium metals. needs. But yeah, these are very big batteries. You know, if, if mining cobalt is bad, then just, you know, the steel for these huge batteries is was also bad. You've got to look at the big picture. Yes. You can't just make these blanket, blank, blanket statements and hope Ronald Brockles won't pick up on it. <laughs> Yeah. You picked up on it, mate. Yeah, oh, they are yeah. massive things. But we, sh yeah, mm. we should be uh, deploying them at scale, seeing the pros and cons in... in, um, mm -hmm. in Try it out. Yeah, in reality. It's good. A lot of good stuff happening. Let's move on to worst review of the week. This is for a company called Commodore Australia, um, like the old 8-bit computer. Oh. Uh, a chap called Adam. So this is interesting because it's a review of an off-grid system. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is a cautionary tale that off-grid systems are much more complicated than on-grid systems. Mm -hmm. Just adding a battery to an on-grid system adds the complication. So you've got to really be careful. And Adam alleges gross incompetence here. Mm. Uh, purchased a generator. They import with a two-wire remote start to work with the remote start function of our, our off-grid system has. Two wires shouldn't be that hard as an electrical <laughs> engineer speaking. We had nothing but problems from the start from failing to freight when they said they would the thing the product failing in the first 10 minutes of operation Ooh. sending the incorrect replacement then spending weeks rectifying that tissue failing to ever have anyone available to talk to me when I called mm. and failing to return my messages before finally walking away from oh. the failed product leaving me with a boat anchor well you can't do that no if that's true mm -hmm. you, contact can't do affairs that. in your state get them to help Adam, you out go to consumer affairs mm -hmm. and tell them the same story I'm sure they are easy enough to deal with when the going's good, but as soon as there is an issue, it changes. Well, I mean, that's how you judge a company, how they deal yeah, with problems. the stuff that doesn't work. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, be Bad careful. things can happen to everyone, but it's what you do when they do happen that counts. Mm -hmm. You gave him two, two stars, though. Yeah, surprising. He's a really nice guy. <laughs> Adam, you're a very nice guy, based uh, on what you said. I, I, I saw a review where the person basically said, the guy stood there and extorted money out of me. Three stars. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't do it with a gun. I guess not. <laughs> Maybe he's just a really nice guy when he did it. On to a, ni on to a nicer review. Um, mm. This is a company called Essential Solar um, near the airport in Melbourne. Tullamarine, I think. Mm -hmm. After getting the three quotes, which Solar Quotes organised, they're a client, by the way, I reviewed them comparing apples and apples and chose to go with Essential Solar, even they were even though they were not the cheapest. Mm. I went with them mostly because of their relationship with Fronius through their Fronius service partnership. Ray was polite, knowledgeable, and to the point. And um, this is a point about solar quotes that some people misunderstand. Some people think it's a get the cheapest system mm. service. No. It's not, it's get three good quotes, good value quotes, and then decide. And from mm. the data we see, most people um, prices, it's important, but it's not the mm. primary driver. Mm. Um, I was guided through the whole process very comprehensively and was very pleasantly surprised by the installation time. Um, yeah, they started at 7.30 a.m., finished around 3 p.m., cleaned all rubbish from the site and worked with me, amending the panel layout as I suggested a way to fit all the panels on one slope, which they mm -hmm. did. Interesting to know why they didn't have that idea, but um, the, uh, Nick seems very happy with it. Everything looks like Everything looks like it's supposed to be, and time will tell if the installation is as good as it looks, but so far, so good. Mm -hmm. Good looking installation. Excellent. Yep. Good. Nice one, Essential Solar. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to talk about, we added some really subtle, but really cool mm -hmm. um, ways to compare reviews on the website. 
Tell me all about it, Finn. All right. So if you have a look at this, the first thing you'll see is uh, the big timeline sticker. Uh -huh. Sticker, button, should I say. So if you click on that, I mean, it's fairly simple, but what you'll see is you can see that for Essential Solar, they got their first review in September 2015. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the best fit line is going up. Or is that just my, I think, I think, anyway, they're very mm. consistent. You can see that they're yeah. very consistent over time. Um, if you look at a company like Energy Matters, you'd see it fall off a cliff. I should have put that one up there. <laughs> Go to the website, have a look at Energy Matters, click the timeline button if you like black yes. humor, um, <laughs> <laughs> black comedy. Mm -hmm. Now, the other oh, cool thing on there, there was a little, uh, I'll just go back. You can see next to the based on 433 reviews, it says Oz ranking, which means Australian ranking. So you can see where they rank in Australia mm -hmm. based on all the reviews we've got on the site, clients, not clients. Now, this is really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. So that graph there, um, it goes from a score of 2.4 on the left, the x-axis, to 4.9. Mm -hmm. So the worst anyone's got is an average score of 2.4. And if you look mm -hmm. at the radio buttons, we're comparing uh, the average score overall time of companies with at least 25 reviews. Mm -hmm. So there's a company on Solar Quotes with at least 25 reviews and an average score of 2.4. <laughs> we should find out who that is. Yeah. It's not a client. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a company on there with at least 25 reviews with an average score of 4.9 because that's the maximum Excellent. on the x-axis so um and you can see it's not quite a bell curve mm -hmm. statisticians note um and essential solar who score 4.5 average when you compare them with every other installer on the site with at least 25 reviews time frame of all time they are in the 76th percentile so they're in the top 24 percent of all installers reviewed on site. Mm -hmm. So if you want to compare installers, that's actually really quite useful. Yeah. I oh, think that's cool. Warren Johnston. Best you'll get Warren Johnston. Warwick Johnston. Not Warren. Warwick Johnston of Sunwiz. This was your idea. You gave it to me about five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's a brilliant idea and we finally did it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that's really interesting. It's a lot of work, I imagine. Yeah, the, the guys put a lot of work into it because it's all custom stuff. I did nothing. Um, really interesting. So you can look at a company and go, oh, they've got a score of 4.1. That seems okay. Mm. And then you can look on this graph and you see they're in the bottom 19% of all installers yeah. with a similar criteria. So yeah. yeah, it's very, very, I think that's really cool. Yeah. You won't find that anywhere else. You won't find that anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Really, really useful. Mm -hmm. um, we're putting an enormous amount of effort into our reviews over the next three quarters. You're going to see some amazing stuff at mm. Ramis. Yes. Maybe in five years, people will be telling you they got the idea from you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Mm -hmm. Moving on. Oh, yeah. End fossil fuel subsidies. Stop new coal plants, UN Secretary General says. I agree, 100%. So he said, yeah, I agree 100%. I mean, people, it's, it's good that people, I get a vibe that people are sensing how urgent this is now. Yep. Yeah. Albeit very late. Mm -hmm. uh, James Hansen said it was an emergency 30 years ago. Yep. Um, so the Secretary General, UN chap, he says we should not tax people, we should tax pollution. So he says there should be a shift from income taxes to carbon taxes. Yeah, I, what do you think? I agree with that general sentiment. In practice, you, the, if you tax carbon at an appropriate rate, we will use far less fossil fuels, so your tax revenue from that will fall, and so you'll need to go back to income taxes. So you have to think it through. And, work out what's maybe a medium course through that. So we used to have a carbon price, our car, you know, it was called a carbon tax, it wasn't, it was an emission trading scheme, but anyway. And it got taken away and we had a big hole in our budget. They, the amusing thing is they partially compensated for that by increasing the fuel excise, which apparently doesn't count as a carbon tax. Because, <laughs> you know, petroleum, that, that's got nothing to do with carbon, right? Petrol, diesel, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so yeah, you gotta gotta think these things through. I hope that government's not in power as we, not as we speak, as we upload to YouTube. Yes, <laughs> yes. As we speak through YouTube. <sighs> yes. Well, we'll find out. I'll try not to jinx it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. I think um, I think these ex. Do you know Extinction Rebellion? The Is guys it? organizing these direct action protests. Go on. I think they've 
got a, a, quite a bit to do with it. I think that direct protest is working. So They're the guys who were sued in the UK for a huge amount of money. Were they? I can't remember if they're the same guys. Oh. Same gals and guys. Possibly. Mm. But I mean, people putting their liberty on the line. Yeah, yeah. yeah to make yes. a point. It seems to be working, so mm -hmm. those people are so brave. Props to them. Yeah. Um, now, I showed you this video this morning. You <laughs> haven't seen it. Yep, yep. Um, Bill Nye, the science guy. Yeah, I think this is an example of... Uh, Oh, Here, I, I've got an experiment for you, safety glasses on. By the end of this century, if emissions keep rising, the average temperature on Earth could go up another four to eight degrees. What I'm saying is the planet's on fucking fire. There are a lot of things we could do to put it out. Are any of them free? No, of course not. Nothing's free, you idiots. Grow the fuck up. You're not children anymore. I didn't mind explaining photosynthesis to you when you were 12. But you're adults now, and this is an actual crisis. Got it? Safety glasses off, motherfuckers. <laughs> yep. That's the language I think we've got to start using. Yeah. Uh, four to eight degrees is deadly. Uh, I think we're insane to allow things to go to one and a half degrees. And we're eight degrees is an extinction level event, surely. Well, for most species. I'll be, I'll be fine in my hermetically sealed bubble. I don't know about the rest of you. Yeah, it's all well stocked up with cornflakes and condensed milk, I can tell you. Should be on a war footing, if you mm -hmm. ask me. But a little little slither of optimism here, Ronald. Oh. The UK solar power reaches all time generation peak. There's solar power in the UK? <laughs> it's about it's so ten, dreary. They reached almost ten gigawatts. That's from, a lot of Yeah, from I think a twelve gigawatt installed capacity. Ten gigawatts of solar power from twelve gigawatts. That's very good. We don't get that sort of output here. A cool but sunny day. Yeah, it's excellent. Amazing. And I think Australia's about 11 gigawatts installed. Oh, roughly. Yeah, that's about right. So about the same, give or take a gigawatt. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the UK has a bigger population. 60-odd yes. million. We are yep. 24 million. 25 million now. You've been busy. Uh, I don't mean to boast. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, I, I uh, worked it out. Installed watts per POMI is mm -hmm. slither under 200 watts per person. Mm -hmm. uh, installed solar per Aussie is just under 500 watts. Uh, must be getting up there. Yeah. It's pretty good, eh? Yeah, installed very, very watts per Finnish person. Mm -hmm. 200? Two. <laughs> Two watts. Okay, I've, England's got them beat. <laughs> yep. Interesting, hey? Oh, yeah. Speaking of Finland. Oh, yes. Let's talk about this. Yes, so what was it you said to me a week ago? I said, Finland, where you have long dark winters, yes. gets down to minus 50, <laughs> you get an hour or two of sunlight, mm -hmm. you, they want nuclear power. Mm -hmm. And I thought, nah, you don't need nuclear power in Finland. They got wind power, renew and nuclear power is so expensive these days. Surely, surely it'd make more sense to go use your renewables and if you need pump storage or batteries, you can do that. Or Norway, this year they figure maybe 50% of all new cars will be electric. So when the wind's blowing, you can stick those electrons. Yes, you're not really sticking electrons. Put the power into those uh, cars, store it for later if you need it. Or just, you know, you, you don't have to take it out again. You just suck it up and there's plenty of power when it's cheap. So I thought, nah, you don't need it. And I looked at it and I was right. Look, no way nuclear can pay for itself at the current prices, or even at the optimi what I call a very optimistic price of eight cents per around eight cents per kilowatt hour for the new reactor they're planning to build, start building in a couple of years. I think that's very dangerous talk. Really? I don't think we should be demonizing nuclear based on safety or cost because we need oh. we need all the tools at our disposal and we okay. should be developing these reactors and getting the cost down and getting the safety up even though they are it is the safest form of electricity generation already oh. i think having having i looked at these reactor design actually right i looked into that i thought is that right yeah it looks like it could certainly be it, you know it's hard to say but yeah yeah look that looks safe i mean millions of lives depend on it the future of a pleasant planet depends on it um, we should be, the w w way I differ to other kind of uh, 
nuclear fanboys is I don't demonize renewables. I think we should be developing both. And the way I differ with renewables fanboys is I don't demonize nuclear. I think we need, we need to be developing both and we, we don't know what breakthroughs we're going to get in either and we don't know what problems we're going to have with either. Yeah, I disagree <laughs> entirely. <laughs> My disagreement is principled, moral, ethical and meaningful, but substantial. Okay, I didn't say anything about safety. I'm going to put that completely aside. Um, let's just say they're equally safe. I don't care. That's not important to the discussion because it doesn't matter because of the economic side. Because at the current cost of nuclear power, you can build twice as much renewable capacity even if you're extremely optimistic about the cost of nuclear power. It's had 60 years to come down in pr price and it's not doing well in price at the moment. We've got uh, far more capacity to we can build more renewables at the current price and renewables are clearly falling in price rapidly as well it's clear to me that renewables are the quickest cheapest option to cut to cut carbon emissions what do you think Finn are we talking about Finland or Australia uh, the work anywhere is I say from what I can see nuclear power is no good anywhere in the world what do you think I mean new nuclear power because of its high expense. I think it's naive to think that powering the world with renewable energy comes without massive technical risk. Mm -hmm. um, and I think getting to the last thir 20, 30 percent of renewables is going to be much more expensive than people think and have some really hairy control problems. And I still think we should aim for that, but I think we should not um, stop developing nuclear because it's an alternative and it's in our, we, we need those reactor designs in our back pocket and that expertise to not die out in case we need it. Mm -hmm. And it makes the problem a lot easier if you've got a bunch of nuclear reactors chugging along mm -hmm. um, in the short term. And we, I'm sure we'll get to a 100% renewable power, powered world, but I think it's decades and decades and decades away. And in the meantime, if we do need that, um, that style of power, we want nuclear so we don't just revert back to the easy one, which is coal. And I disagree. <laughs> Should we leave it there? Oh, don't you have something beautiful to show us? Oh, speaking of Finland, yes. Mm -hmm. um, this is some land I inherited in Finland recently um, from my grandparents. And I was thinking I'm going to stick some ground mount solar on there. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be an interesting project. In Finland? In Finland, near the Arctic mm -hmm. Circle. Interesting. But I looked up Helsinki's figures. They Over a year, they generate two-thirds as much electricity as in Sydney. And that's pretty good. It's pretty good, eh? Just next nothing <laughs> in December. Next to nothing in December. Seriously. It was so bad. <laughs> yeah, um, it's ridiculous. I, it's, it's like the sun doesn't come up at all. It, oh, yeah, it kind mm. of... It kind of teases the horizon and drops back down again. Bye. Well, I'm going to do the analysis and I'm, I'm going to maybe stick a few tens of kilowatts yep. somewhere. Mm -hmm. and it'll, be, it'll be an interesting output project. Great in the summer. Yeah. Yeah, 24 hours of sun, literally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice bit of land. Um, so I'm going to get some quotes from Finnish guys to do it. Mm -hmm. And I expect they'll be insanely expensive. Yeah. Because it's such a small market. Mm -hmm. So any Australian installers that fancy spending <laughs> a Australian winter Mm-hmm. Or Finnish summer in the north of Finland. Yeah. Um, um, Sounds awesome. In the next couple of years, I think I'm going to go out and do that. It'll be interesting. Yeah. Cool.